Welcome to the Wedco Podcast, where wedding wisdom meets street smarts. We're dishing out all the tips, tricks, and wedding goss to take your wedding to the next level. Time to ditch the formalities and get this party started. Yeah! <laughs> All right, hello and welcome to the Wedco Podcast. I'm Togger. And I'm Joel. And today we have Susie Figgis on the uh, podcast with us. How are you going, Susie? Good, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I knew a bit, like a little bit nervous, but um, I think it's going to be amazing today. So thank you very much yeah, for coming yeah. by. Looking yeah. forward to chatting. Thank um, you. So maybe would you like to tell everyone who you are and uh, yeah, how you got into weddings? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little question. <laughs> <laughs> so Susie Figgis, yep. celebrant. Uh, got into weddings. I was just thinking about this in the car on the way, actually. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I used to do a lot of women's circles and ceremony just as a service to my cohort and yep. a few friends said, you should do this professionally. And I realised as well that I'd always spoken to people at length about their relationships. Yep. So it kind of went, hmm, maybe doing weddings is a good idea, you know. So uh, And I also had all this facilitation background okay. uh, as a profession, you know. I used to do corporate training so I think I kind of put those three together and decided that weddings could be a good thing for yeah, me okay. yeah and I did back then so that was 20 years ago oh, that wow. I did my first training and um, back then they had this system where you had to um, wait for your application till there were only a certain amount of celebrants in each area oh, so wow. I did the training after that idea was born and then had to wait for about two or three years before I got registered. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but I feel like then celebrants used to look like tea cozies and just do really boring ceremonies, <laughs> like the yeah. few that I'd been to in, in Sydney, um, was never that impressed. So I yeah, definitely felt that I could really personalise and just add that, you know, another layer, another level of um, accessibility for people yeah. you know, in the ceremonies that I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. So it started off in Sydney, that's started where you were living at the time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And at the process of becoming celebrant, that, has that changed a lot since that point? Like obviously you don't have the three-year wait time now. Yeah. Is um, as far as getting it, is a training different to what it was when you? I think got it? so. I think a lot of people do it online now. Okay. Mm. Um, when I did it, it was a one week full time course. Okay. You know, and yeah, just interesting. All, all the I'm, I remember getting all these paragraphs and all this wording that I could use, and thinking to myself, "Oh my god, not that's not what I'm going to say." <laughs> I'm going to customize know? this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to create my own words. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, which has been a process. It's that those words that I give to couples has just been an evolving document yeah. over 20 years. But okay. it was a great journey in in Sydney because I was, you know, I had a baby then and. I just it was a cool thing to do as well as the corporate work I was doing. And yeah, for sure. Just had this abundant journey, like sort of put myself out there, did the first wedding, and um, and from there, just I think I was really refreshing for people because I was yep. you know young and yeah. a bit different, and yeah, I did probably five hundred weddings over oh. those first four years wow. in my um, profession in Sydney. Yeah, okay. Whoa. Lots of cool venues around Sydney, yeah. and yep. you know, really big ones, um, which is definitely overwhelming, like yeah. two, three hundred people on the shore of Sydney Harbour. And stuff oh, like that. Wow. Mm. Okay. And so I figured, yeah, that the um, celebrants nowadays are a lot different to back then as well, like in general. Yeah. Um, and then so how do you find, um, we're speaking to a few people, it feels like the wedding market everywhere is getting more and more saturated, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which you can definitely have that mindset where that doesn't matter. There's plenty of weddings for everyone, but I feel like it's almost that tipping point now where there, there is like tons of other celebrants, photographers, everything around. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, how is that affecting you at the moment? Good question. I mean, definitely bookings are down yep. for next year a little bit, but I'm also okay with that. For you sure. know, just feel like um, there's there's certain couples that I, or I would be really drawn to working with these days, yeah. and I feel like they're really drawn to working with me. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's it, it's a lot of pressure doing yep. 60, 80 weddings a year. Yeah, for you sure. know, it really is. I remember there was a time in. COVID times where, um, you know, everything got postponed for a while and then there was that really busy September, October and I think I did like 40 weddings yeah. in two months yep. and and then I went camping and I, I was really defragging from all that pressure because everyone, you yeah. know, you've got to – there's no chance to make You're any on. mistakes. You're yeah. really on. You yep. know, a lot of people have been dreaming about this day for a long time. So I had this – when we were camping, this defragging moment where I was like – I think unraveling that stress and yeah, um, yeah. people were throwing these rotten tomatoes at me because <laughs> I wasn't doing the right thing or something. That was a really funny pro- just mental process to yeah, go yeah. through. But so yeah, weddings, few less weddings than maybe other years. Yeah. Yeah. But um, 
I feel like that's the same across the board though. Pretty yeah. much everyone we speak to at the moment, there's there's maybe a couple that are crazy busy, yeah. but I feel like the majority is the bookings are a lot slower at the Absolutely. moment. And a lot yeah. more like kind of three to four months ahead of time instead of a year, a year and a half. It's yeah. definitely shifting in the last, you know, year probably. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the economy more than anything. And fire yeah. and especially being a destination wedding venue, some people are realising that they can't bring all their people to spend $3,000 yeah. for a weekend for, yeah. a, for a wedding. But I think it's a, you know, it's a time for all of us to pick pivot a little bit around yeah. where we're putting our energy and I've just birthed a gardening business which okay. is actually awesome. going to be a really nice balance for me, you know, grounding as well as the, you know, the high level, you know, stress that comes with the ceremonies Amazing. and, you know, just, yeah, it's a nice combination for me. So can we angle that in as like a little add-on to your celebration? <laughs> yeah. <services? laughs> you can do some planting <laughs> while we... Exactly. <laughs> we'll plant a tree or something for your celebration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's yeah. Good nice. but I think uh, I think also um, it's it's interesting that I, I've found that post COVID or sorry, like around that COVID time, everyone was kind of like, we just need to take everything. Like that's kind of how a lot of people got through. Mm-hmm. They were like, give me all the bookings and like I'll just kind of live off deposits and all that sort of thing, and then you know we'll deal it deal with it at the tail end. And then everyone was like, you said you you were doing forty weddings. Everyone was doing so many. And I think it's kind of gotten to that point where we've, we all did that that year, that post COVID, where it was like, there's, we just like ran ourselves sick. And then it was just like, okay, now I think it's all balancing out. We're all probably realizing, okay, we don't actually need to do that many weddings a year. You know, this is where we're comfortable. This is my happy number. This yeah. is where I feel like I'm being a best service to the client. Yeah. It's but so also, true. you know, like being able to keep myself, you know, mentally sane, hanging out with the kids and the family and stuff like mm. that. So I think it's been an interesting shift. Um, I think it's been a difficult one for some people because they just got so much into the mindset of like I've got to I've got to work I've got to work I've got to work. Mm. Um, yeah, so I th- I don't think it's a bad thing. I think I think it's good that we're all kind of starting to realise that. Bit yeah. of yin and yang. Yeah, going from yeah. like super busy through to yeah, yeah, just take it like what you're supposed to now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just like understanding that balance. Yeah. That's totally. Right, yeah. And and also understanding your value. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like like the, the, the temptation is to quote lower to try and get Definitely. that extra yeah. wedding and I just don't generally do that because yeah. I know how much I put in. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want to be feeling frustrated that I've, you know, gone right over the, you know, done everything and more to yeah. create the perfect ceremony yeah. and I've discounted them $250 at the front end to get that wedding. Like exactly. that doesn't sit well, you know, you know yeah. what you're worth. And yeah. I think even when the competition's on, it's you just got yeah. to hold your value. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And mm. like people will realise your value. And mm. and the thing is, same thing, if you're going to charge $250 cheaper, you're still going to give the same service anyway. Yeah. You know, like you're still going to give this high service. It's not mm. like you're going to give a little less yeah, because exactly. you did that. And yeah, um, yeah I think uh, we were kind of were talking earlier and saying even how – I feel like the DIY is shifting, you know, everyone five years ago was DIY weddings. This is what we want to do. Mm. Yeah. And you shoot it and it sounds like an amazing idea and you're going to do it all yourself and it's going to be amazing. And now I think everyone's going the other way like, oh, no, we need help. Like we yeah. want we want professionals 100%. to help us with this. It's going to be an amazing party. We can just rock up and dad doesn't have to be building an arbor the morning of your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's people are actually... Or you don't have to be the person walking around picking up your champagne yeah. glasses on the day after your wedding, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. Stuff. So, yeah, I feel like people are definitely starting to see the value again. Yeah. And it's just trying to get through because there are so many of, of all the vendors now. It's just trying to kind of being able to show people who you are. And I feel like that's yeah. the harder part. You know, mm. you just just need to be a marketer these days more than anything. Yeah. Um, so which can true. be tough. Yeah, it's like if you're good at marketing, you're, you're booked. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. really matter how good you are as a photographer, a celebrant. You, yeah, you just need to be a marketer. So, so to a degree, I think. Yeah. I think if you're pretty, <laughs> if you're pretty bad at being a photographer, I reckon that'd catch up with you. Yeah, yeah, eventually. If, if you're good marketing. That's yeah. right. Yeah, word um, gets around if you're a bad celebrant too. Yeah, you know, definitely. You, you know, your work definitely backs up your future yeah. referrals and yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. But the on the planner thing, like the DIY, yeah. uh, certainly with elopements and really small ones, yes. Yeah. But what yeah. I notice as a celebrant is if there's not a planner, then you end up doing yeah. so much more for that couple. Totally, yeah. And it's like there's a, there's a fine line where, that you know, you sort of almost want to have that conversation. Look, if you don't have a planner yeah. and you're going to be using my resource and my – all my contacts and my advice on all locations and everything, yeah. then I almost need to charge you a little planning fee myself because yeah, yeah. the amount of emails or whatever that will happen with yeah. those couples. I'm happy to do it in a lot of cases but yeah. definitely the value of a planner is, um, yep. you know, gold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. especially after the uh, ceremony where all of a sudden now you're an- announcing like family photos or group photos and you kind of are still running around after the ceremony yeah. and people just almost take that for granted. Mm. You're like, oh, no, like this is an, uh, it's a service and it's, you know, mm. I am a professional and... 
it's like something that you would almost just do for free because you see it on a day they need that. Yeah, yeah But exactly. also people need to realise what that is. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good. Um, we, like my wife and I, we got married a few years ago now. Um, very mm. exciting. But also I've, I've been a wedding photographer for 13 years mm. and I had no idea what it was, like what was entailed to actually get married. Yeah. So if we were coming to you um, and it was a year out from our wedding, can you give us like a little rundown of like what is the actual process? The legal. Yeah, yeah, of, like yeah. of getting married. What do we actually need to do? Yeah, so I always say that's the boring but important part. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Get that out of the way so you can focus on the creative piece. But, yeah, yeah. so the, that part, yeah, and it is important because obviously legally it's a really big step getting mm-hmm. married. So you have to make sure that you both not, you know, both people coming to the party um, aren't currently married. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it, if you, you know, if it was just simple and you hadn't been married before, then you then you meet with your celebrant. You fill in the, the official paperwork, the notice of intended marriage form. Okay, that needs to be at least one month prior to the date of the wedding. So you can't do that last minute Vegas style. Yeah. Yeah. Met you last <laughs> night. Let's get married tomorrow. And that's yeah. just the government's way of making sure that the you know the institution of marriage is at least given a little bit of consideration. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So that's the one month prior piece. Yep. Um, and. During COVID, people were actually allowed to send that in and or this celebrant sign it online. Okay. Because uh, people were, uh, you know, uh, yeah. finding it difficult to get out and get it signed yeah. by JPs or whatever. Yeah, true. I believe that's been reversed again now. So, you, you know, it's couples can either get it, get it if, if you're not going to meet them. So, being yeah. a destination wedding venue, often I'll be, you know, dealing with a couple in Melbourne or something who aren't going to be here physically with me face to face until a few days before the wedding. Yep. So, they just need to, you know, Fill it in, go and sign it with a JP or a police officer or a number of people on the list, okay. send it up to me or scan it up to me and then um, that's considered lodged. Once yep. your celebrant receives that paperwork, you've lodged it with okay. them. Yep. There's a lot of confusion about that. People will sometimes send me a message going, have you lodged the paperwork, Susie? I'm like, you know, once I receive it, that's been lodged that, okay. as a celebrant. And then um, and then before the wedding, there's a little stat deck that yep. the couple need to sign just saying that there, there's no legal impediment to the marriage. So yep. the things like you're not marrying your brother or sister or, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, um, you actually want to marry this person, yeah, yeah. you're not being pressured by your family and that you're not married to any, anyone else, all that stuff just. Yeah. Like I've seen a few celebrants kind of come in the morning of, they'll kind of, they'll come into the bride prep room or something and they'll yep. get them to sign something. Is that kind of what they're doing then, doing that? The stat deck. The stat yeah, deck. Just yeah. The, it's called the no legal impediment to marriage. Yeah. Okay. Document. Yep. And are they only doing that the morning of because they probably haven't seen the couple beforehand? Mm-hmm. Or okay, got you. Mm-hmm. And so, in an ideal world, yeah, you don't you you have a meeting beforehand. Yeah. Yep. Um, where it might just be the day or so before when a couple arrive into Byron, being yep. a destination wedding venue. Yeah. Of course. Yep. So you have a coffee and a run through, and yeah. By then, you you know pretty much everything's sorted. And I so I often don't do a rehearsal yep. with a couple, but I will do a, a little run through like yeah. when we're having a coffee. Um, yeah, so cool. it's like you're going to stand like this, and then you're going to turn and face each other and be like this, and then at the end I'll get you to face outward again. So just yep. locking in the standing positions and yep. finalizing and just that, making paperwork. sure that they're happy with those kind of things, those details and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Is is a rehearsal work like needed? Like I know that some people, especially organised people, probably really love it because they get to mm. do like I remember I did one for my wedding, my sister did one for her wedding. But the more I think about it, I'm like, is it needed? Like, Yeah, I think with a really with a good experienced celebrant, less so, yeah. you know, because um, we know, what, we know yeah, what's going to sure. work and we know how to give those gentle instructions to people on yep. the day and in the moment. So, yeah, I've never been a big one for rehearsals. If, yeah. if my couples want it, absolutely. And it can be good if there's like a bigger bridal party or mm-hmm. kids or, yeah. you know. Just like organise logistics kind of thing to organise them. More, yeah, more things involved, like more people involved, then it can be good to help. Just get, you're going to stand here and the kids are going to do this and then they're going to go over there. Yeah. And it, or a very nervous dad if, yeah, walking okay. his bride in. It can be good for him just to lock in the three things he needs to do. And I always say Definitely. three things for dad. So yep. first thing, you know, give a handshake or a hug yep. to the groom um, or the partner and then... Um, hug your hug, hug your daughter, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then go and sit down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sit down, without dad. those three instructions, I've yeah. had dads like just hovering, just like, yeah, sort totally. of putting themselves in there next to the bride. And I'm like, okay, you can go now. So yes, you don't yeah. want to do that awkward thing. You're just like, he knows he's sitting down. Right, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's it's funny. It's funny you say that because definitely that walking down the aisle, and even from you know the groom to bride to dad or mum or whoever's kind of doing that situation, it can be a really awkward time. Like yeah. if you haven't. Yeah discussed what you're doing or mm. if there isn't someone to kind of lead you in a direction like 
I remember I was like uh, my wife walked out on yeah. not wife at the time, but yeah, she walked out and I was just I didn't even I don't even think I held her hand and we were just like standing there. And then I look at it these days, I'm like, dude, like hold your partner's hands. Like you can <laughs> yeah. like you, you like each other. It's amazing how often naturally people will stand away from each other a bit. Yeah. And so again that those sort of things are good in that run through or that rehearsal. Like yeah. you're getting married. You love yeah. each other. Make sure you're really close yeah. and holding a hand or, you know, yeah. uh, it's always nice for them to feel quite relaxed, I think, totally. in that first half. So yeah almost like I'm going to be telling the story of your love, just relax yeah. into that. You yeah, know? for sure. So once you've arrived and all that bit's happened, the eyes, eyes off you for a second and you yeah. can look at me and, uh, yeah, so because a lot of people express how much they hate being the centre of attention. Yes, yeah. definitely. So sure. that's part of the conversation, you know, the yes, all eyes on you at the beginning but then we'll take some eyes off you when I'm welcoming yeah. everyone and, and, you know, different stages where you feel like, you know, you're not, don't have to be the full centre of attention. Like yeah. I can take that for you and talk about your love story like that, you know. We, yeah. we have the same spiel for the like our brides and grooms as well. It's like look at each other because the amount of times you'll get photos and you're like you just you're waiting for them to look at each other and yep. they'll both be looking at the celebrant the whole time like look at each other, look at each other and just like waiting for that second. And and like, you, you can hold hands, you can look at each other like, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, but, yeah, it's just like the nerves kind of kick in and they'll just be yeah. like looking at the yeah. celebrant like just talking the whole time and not realising their, their wife's like going to be just there and it's like come on, connect. <laughs> it's a funny one that and so, yeah, the main – the. You know, I play with this a little bit, mm, yep. especially now when it's just really refining the ultimate way for that because there's nothing worse than feeling like they're looking at you too much and yep. not each other. So, yep. But usually, and I think a lot of my, you know, fellow celebrants do this too, will start the ceremony where they're actually looking outward. So yes, I would okay. say, you know, facing your guests to yes. start with yep. and um, that's when we welcome everyone, we, you know, make everyone feel like special and, yep. and um you know, honoured for being part of your life. So yeah. there's that focus back on the guests then, you know, away yeah. from you. And and then we talk a bit about your love story and we share some of that, you know, the the, the fun, you know, poignant version, not the long boring yes, version. Yeah, yeah. And then there'll be a moment where I move around behind them and then that's when they face each other. Yeah, so definitely. facing out to start with, but then you don't want that to be too long because that's when they actually are looking out at you. So then when you move around behind them, then there's, you know, things like the asking, the vows and the rings, but yep. also I'll generally do in that moment like a, a nice long version of what they love about each other. So yeah. making yeah. sure they're looking yeah. at each other for that. Yeah, yeah. that's um, beautiful. And, and often, the, you know, the celebrant authorization too because that, they're the yep. serious words where it's, you know, that you don't want them looking at you for that. You want them looking at each other going, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, we're, we're doing, doing this. We're doing it for life. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. how do you do the vows aspect? Do you have uh, vow cards for the bride and groom or are you there talking to them quietly and they say that or how does that work? Sometimes um, yep. the vow cards but yep. my absolute preference with vows is prompting Yep. Okay. actually and the reason for that is that I find couples drop in together so much more deeply mm -hmm. when, when you prompt them. Yep. So they'll, uh, you know, and we work extensively on how to write good vows before that. But okay. so they've arrived with their vows, they've sent them through to me and then I break them down into small little bite-sized chunks. Beautiful. Mm. So because the brain doesn't remember more than four or five words yep. often in that emotional yeah, moment. Sure. So I'll, you know, I always advise people, my experience is for most couples, it's much better to let me prompt you because you can hold each other's hands, you can look at each other deeply into your eyes and mm. have that lovely hand, heart, eye connection yep. when you're speaking your vows rather than holding a mic, looking down at what yeah, you've yeah. written, yeah. which I know some celebrants do that mostly yep. and everyone has their own style but I just find when my couples do that they generally – don't look at each other yeah, for sure. anywhere near as much as they mm -hmm. could and they will also tend to rush whereas yeah. if I'm prompting I can just keep the speed really slow and yeah. grounded and present in that moment. And for Especially the, gro the groom. Yeah, like yeah, he's normally sitting there. He's the one packing himself before the set the, the, the set up. I almost say the celebration before their cere ceremony. He's normally packing himself, and so he's like just trying to rush through. He's yeah. not a good public speaker. He's probably a tradie or something like that. Yeah. And he's just like trying to burn through it as quick as instead of being like, yeah. "There's actual depth to the, what I'm saying." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they've yeah. often put a lot of thought into it, and so it's. I just, I just find, and I, you know, for photos and everything, I do yep. try and pull off to the side. Yeah. So yeah. when I'm, some people will be like, "Yeah, I'd, okay, you can prompt us, but I want to hold my mic." Okay. Or, or I'll, I'd rather read, but can you hold the mic so I can at least hold one hand? Yep. And then I'm still in the, you know, in the field yeah. to help slow them down or hold the mic so they mm -hmm. can hold a hand. But 
But, yeah, you know, in all the weddings I've done, for sure I love, uh, I feel like the prompting works best Definitely, for most yeah. couples. I feel like the connection and the emotion is pretty high as well. And even mm. for us, like you'll if whoever's shooting photo between us two, um, you can kind of, as soon as they look up, it's like... Yeah. And then they'll look back down and start reading again. And the whole time you're kind of just waiting for them to look up at each other. Yeah. And then they'll just like look down and start reading again. Yeah. So you've noticed what I'm talking about too. Time. Then. Absolutely. Yeah, mm. yeah it's, it's a really big one. As soon as they are reading, it doesn't really uh, change the emotion level because I find like a lot of people will read the words and they might even tear up while they're reading. Yeah. Mm. But the actual images that you get are a lot different because they're looking down rather than looking at each other and hearing what you're saying to them Definitely. to repeat. It's a very different experience. Yeah. So, yeah, it works really well that I way. I guess if you're doing a video, the one thing is it can be glitchy to edit it because yeah, yeah. It, mm. then you've got it, you know, the person on the back end has to edit out my prompting yeah. to just get that, you know, the, the couple saying the vows. Yep. But the other thing I say because people often go like, wait, what? We're going to – you're going to – prompt us and I, well, all the weddings I've been to I've seen people reading and, yep. and I always explain look I'm going to prompt you really quietly off mic yep. and I'll just hold the mic there so your cu- your people aren't going to hear me exactly. prompting you I'm just going to be doing that really quietly for you and then they'll hear your voices and it'll just slow everything down so yeah, yeah, yeah. works In well. The last uh, five weddings of this year I've had a first look at every wedding mm-hmm. which is actually quite strange it's probably maybe usually maybe 10% of weddings yeah. will have a first look Um how do you find, does that mm. change anything on the day for ceremony? If they've had a first look prior, does that change anything in your perspective? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I think it does. I mean, I think the magic of that moment when yep. the bride is walking down the aisle, there's yep. so much intense emotion that mm. happens there. And for some people they don't want that intense emotion yeah. in front of their people or, you know, with a, with a whole bunch of people looking on. But yeah. For sure, there's two highlights in a ceremony, right? You guys know that yeah. it's the it's the bride's entrance and the vows. We yeah. all know that's where the emotions run the highest. And yeah. So for me, I, it's nice for everyone to see the groom have his reaction at the beautiful bride in the ceremony moment. But that's because I'm a ceremony person and yeah. I like it all yeah. to happen there. And I yeah. get that for various reasons people make their choices to have that emotion with, without all the eyes on. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But, um, it, but it's interesting to hear like a different perspective because obviously mm. we only know what we know. So it's actually really cool to hear that sometimes you've felt like it might take away from that ceremony. Of course it's, you know, it's down to the couple and what they want to do yeah. but um, it's always cool to hear someone else's perspective on it because uh, yeah. you've only thought of something in one way and you're like, oh, it's a beautiful moment. Yep. You know, like we're not thinking of it selfishly like we're going to get nice photos where – we're going to get I nice am, photos. I yeah. am for sure. <laughs> Definitely yeah. like I feel like a first look, you're going to get amazing photos. For sure. You get, yeah. Like they're amazing. But me personally, I prefer not to do a first look mm. because I want to see groom crying. I want to see mum crying because groom's crying and like getting all <laughs> the – like because as soon as he yeah. starts crying, sisters, brothers, everyone starts crying and yeah. you're like, yes, True. Like, this is it's the best. It's a flow on. It's exactly. so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but – a first look for if you're just wanting photos probably looks better. Right. But you definitely do lose the ceremony aspect. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then even more people are doing their own personal vows um, at a first look as well. And then mm. that that mm. definitely takes away a lot from the ceremony. Um, but the same thing comes down to personal choice. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's interesting to see how everyone differs on that view as well. I even had one – I did one last week. Um, and so she still left it where – she didn't have a veil in for the first look. So I guess like mm-hmm. then there was still that point of difference of like she's seen me this morning and I've seen her but also like she then put a veil on after and then kind of walked down the aisle. So there was still mm-hmm. I feel like that moment. I definitely can see how not like it could be robbed but like definitely that emotion isn't quite as high. But I think mum's still going to cry regardless. Yeah. Like, it's true. <laughs> and of course there's a practicality too when you do the first look you're actually getting a few more cool couple photos right there so there's yeah, maybe afterwards. less of a need to take them out of their party or their, yep, yep, their celebration sure. at the end which I totally get the practicality of that piece. Yeah. But yeah, from a purist perspective yeah. around, you know, that first look it is – I think ultimate if it's in the ceremony itself. Yep. That's yeah. just, but I'm a, you know I'm a ceremony maker, so I'm I biased. It, yeah. I bet most celebrants would agree with me on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Coming into most celebrants, um, mm. there is a big. I mean, I don't think it's new. Um, it's the celebrant show. Yeah, you know, everyone's here to watch the celebrant, mm-hmm. and that's very common these days. Mm-hmm. I feel like your ceremonies aren't that. You're very much focused on the couple and bringing the emotion to just like straight towards the couple and you. Obviously, you're there and you're the professional, but you kind of just seem to go into the background and make it all about them. Mm. Thanks um, for that. That's, and, a, that's a lovely reflection because it's funny. I actually 
don't like being the centre of attention. Yep. I'm, I'm not that person. So mm. definitely don't gravitate to this work so I can be the, the Susie show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm. I guess it definitely reflects on the couples you have. Like every couple yeah. that I've worked with you are, I would say they they're not so extroverted they are yeah. a, a bit nervous they're really into each other they yeah they might be shy and worried about what everyone's thinking you know so you kind of do get those couples as well mm. how how do you do you think that gravitates like how do you book those couples how do you set up your marketing that mm. people can actually see who you are mm. um rather than i am the party <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good i mean that's a great question yeah it's very true <clears throat> Um, I, pr- I probably, I don't know, somewhere yep. subtly in my wording on yep. my website and probably the posts I make, yep. there's a sense of that, that yep. it's not the Susie show. It's it's very, per- you know, the ceremonies are very personal. Yep. I think there's a lot of us, though, in Byron who, who are similar. Yeah, for sure. Um, but everyone has that experience of a celebrant who is the, you know, the person who thinks they're probably a stand-up comedian but haven't made it in that yeah. world so <laughs> yeah. they just start Completely. cracking their own jokes. And that, I mean, it comes out in the early conversation with a couple. Yep. They'll they'll be sniffing out, I think, to find out. Like in my mind there are two versions of celebrants. One yep. is the, the more extroverted and one is then my style, which yep. is where you're delivering the story and you Let's hope... Let's go three. You, and then there's okay. the boring. <laughs> and then there's the boring, yeah, who tells the really long version yeah. of the story like... Yeah, it's, uh, Sydney 20 years ago. That's yeah, it. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I so did a yeah. elopement the other week and he had a music stand with some paper on it. I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, it was oh. the worst. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, all the, all the results on the day come from the work that happens in the lead up, you know, that, yep. so the celebrant couple journey and that, yep. that, the quality of that exchange to personalise, you know. So there's not... To me, I don't have like a generic bunch of words that I then just mm-hmm. fill in um, their love story. Yep. I go from the beginning to the end with their choices. It's like a choose your own adventure. So I yeah. give lots of options for all the way through how they yep. how they would like to address their people at the beginning and how they want to talk to, you know, their, even just the rings and what they yep. mean to them and everything in between. So that's all like a choose your own adventure. And so there's the tweaking of the personalization for them all yep. the way through. Yeah. And then so, but sorry, because yeah. we've got a bit off track there <laughs> to, to come back to how I, um, how I don't stand out too much. Yep. I think it's that chameleon-ness. So it's the knowing who am I dealing with here? Like, and it's not yeah. that I only attract people who don't like being the centre of attention. Yeah. I definitely get some big personalities. But so it's just, it's building that up for them. You yeah. know? It's like, so this is the life that these people live and this is how they vibe. And so if they are that more extroverted, high high vibration couple, then that's the, that's where I'm going to go with my energy. Yeah. Like, yep. You know, so it's just about finding what makes them tick and yep. finding what they're all about and, you know, their energy um, for each other and, and you know, yeah. I, it's just really the what makes them tick piece like yeah. and really getting to the essence of that and then weaving that through the, yeah, whole, okay. the whole way. And so nice. how oh, oh, sorry. Uh, like, so how are you finding that out? Like are you meeting with your couples like before they book or are you like are you yeah. trying to meet with them dur- during like a Zoom meeting or a coffee or something like that? Like how are you kind of refining? Because I feel like this is complete assumption but I feel like there'd be a bunch of celebrants where they're like – fill in blank for the people kind of thing. And so they've got a full template and they might customise a piece here and there. But mm. generally speaking, they've got a template and this is what I stick to and this is what we do and this is how the ceremony flows. So it's cool to see that you've got something that's like so personalised. But like from a if, if a couple were looking to, you know, book yourself or, or, mm. or how they can have your part of their wedding, like how are you kind of customising that to them? Mm. So I always offer like a one hour obligation free meeting or like coffee meeting or yep. Zoom yep. call. Yeah, awesome. Because I feel like once you've had that, then they get a set. Usually they're like, whoa, we hadn't thought of all of these things yeah. you've just raised with us. And yeah. and like for me, it's like as soon as you can tap into some humour with people, yeah. generally you've got that connection. Completely. So like I always just try and find that way we can have a laugh or find something that we can connect on. Yeah. And, uh, and like I'm not for everyone, you yeah, know. Of course. But usually... If, if you get people on the phone yeah. and they start to get a sense of how you're going to work with them, then yeah. for me that's that's often um, got them yeah. in the bag, yeah. 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 I feel as like it were. If you're having a coffee meeting, you, you're pretty much like something has to go pretty wrong on that coffee meeting Completely. for you not to be working Unless with them. Unless you're with a bride that's wanting to interview for yeah. celebrants with a coffee meeting and that does happen. Yeah, okay. And you can feel it. You can feel they're just they're not fully engaged yeah. with you and, and that might be because they've already tapped into the fact that I'm not the right person for them. They yeah. maybe yeah. want the extrovert yeah. or yeah. something that... Um, 
Yeah, so that's the first point. Yeah. Um, and I always – I find I separate at least two meetings with each couple and the first ones I call it more the logistics. So yeah. what's your wedding going to look like from yeah. beginning to end? Have you thought about this? Who's going to – who's going to contribute, who's going to do the rings, do you want your bridal party to possibly sit down halfway through, like all of these things that yeah. people haven't thought of. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I always also t- speak about the vows yep. in that first, like give them some ideas and how I tend to approach it. And then the second meeting I make very personal about them. So yep. we've done, we've got it, we're on the same page. We yep. know how you, roughly how your ceremony is going to run and here are my suggestions and these is what you've come to with ideas and we're all on the same page. So second meeting's like tell me about you guys yep. and they're just lots of open questions for them to go into. Yeah. So that's that piece. So I get the verbal piece and then I also give them um, a love story questionnaire. Yeah, beautiful. So that's, you know, and again some people will just write very short answers. Yep, Other yep. people I'm getting like four <laughs> pages or like, Okay, I've got to write a ceremony. Yeah, to got, my, got my work cut out for yeah. me. Yeah, it's literally sometimes like a five, six hour yeah. process. Like when wow. the kids will go to school, I'm like, right, I'm doing, you know, Billy and Bob ceremony today and I'm going to have to dissect all those details mm. they gave me yep. um, and do it justice. Yeah, so that's sure. And that's where the value comes in, I guess, where people are like, well, can you do it for 900? I'm like, no, because yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. be spending yeah, a, a time. large yeah. amount of time yep. to make sure that every single sentence in your ceremony is aligned with you. And yeah. And I think finding that line between what what I think most people I work with they want the personalization they mm-hmm. want to they want there to be some fun in there they want yeah. it, us to you know bring out the humor not my version of humor yeah. not yeah. what I think's funny because that's probably not going to land <laughs> very too well dark. <laughs> <laughs> no but they what what's funny about them you know so yeah. they want they want to get some photos where they're laughing they want to feel that lightness but then Definitely. there's also that nice balance between the reverence you know we're here for something pretty powerful you know tying the knot going yeah. through that. Um, write a passage as it were yeah. so they want to feel the combination of the reverence yeah. and the yeah. humor a lot of times after you you know you'll get your love story um, email i'll end up getting probably the same one as well because like i'll ask for probably uh, i think it's usually six weeks out i ask for like their love story how they met and everything because yeah. you do want to connect as much as possible with yeah. your couples um, it's good that you do that and it's like so many times i'll just get the salary like we send this to the celebrant here you go uh-huh. yeah and same thing i'll get these emails i was like Okay, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. <laughs> but like on the day, just being able to drop little things about how they met and yeah, like, completely. oh, yeah, you were in Whistler in 2008 and you can talk to them about that mm. and it's just that connection and then they let down their borders even more and you can get way better photos. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny you say that, the Whistler thing. I just married a couple oh, really? who are from Whistler and <laughs> yeah. I did some seasons in Whistler in yeah. my 20s and my sister lives in Whistler and so – we, we just went really deep on all these great, uh, you know, bars where they've had their first bear. kiss and yes. all of these things. It, uh-huh. was, it was awesome. And, yeah, it's, a, it's great when there's a theme or a connection yeah. point between you and And it just makes couple. you super yeah. relatable. It, yeah. makes, it makes it almost feel like you're not a business and you're just like a human being and they're like, mm. oh, we can actually talk to you and we can like engage with you. Like I've made a bunch of friends from like, you know, clients uh, that I've shot their weddings and then now they just like follow me on my personal social media and stuff and they're like, oh, it, like – we just really liked you and you're a good dude or whatever. And He's lying. They don't yeah. really. Yeah, I got, I got, I got no <laughs> friends. <laughs> um, okay, and then so we've done a few um, like small elopements, like local ones around. Mm. I, I love them personally. Um, how does I, – I, I guess let's go to another question. When you're doing weddings here, how many are local, Byron and Gold Coast around versus how many are coming like it is a destination wedding for them? I would say of the bigger ones I do, 70, 80% would be destination wedding. Yep. People coming from capital cities and stuff. Mm, yep. Um, and elopements too, that yep. sort of number. I think being in Byron, it's probably, are probably 70, 80% mm. destination. Yeah, right? okay. Would you agree? I would agree, definitely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I feel like the, some of the smaller elopements we do, you can definitely <laughs> tell the people who are from here as well and it's, it is a different feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's just something about knowing the people around here and the demographic. It is, it's completely different where you, you get to a wedding and you're like, oh, this, this is a Sydney crew for sure. Or like yeah. the party is going off yeah. and like they are from Sydney, you know. Yeah. Um, but does that, does that differ your experience and like how you tail uh, the ceremony, um, knowing where they're from, if they are local, if they are coming from, you know, New York or Sydney or wherever? Does Not it, really because no. I feel like, you know, what we're speaking to is love. Yep. You know, mm. so it doesn't matter where you are. Yep. It's just mm. love and life. So, yeah, their experiences in life will depend on um, you know, what we're talking about as far as their meeting and their journey, then that's just going to be where they've come from yep. and where they're going. I mean, it's also really nice to talk to people's future yep. perspective. Like that's 
Um, but I don't think it matters. But to me it doesn't make a difference whether, whether they're local or from New York or from Sydney. It's yeah. like it because it's the, – the point is that it's their personal journey. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Past and future. Yeah. Mm. Ceremonies at the moment, are you seeing any trends coming in at the moment that's changing from a year ago or two years ago? Mm. I'm talking about the guys with the bum bags and they're doing the flowers that's, everywhere. Yeah, so. I had one of them <laughs> recently. Oh, my God, he was so good. This guy's a rock star. I've got some good photos to post sometime when I get to that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fun, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Grandma ring bearers, yes. that's yeah. a really good one too. Dogs, done yep. plenty of dogs. Yeah, had one wayward dog once that jumped in the river at... Um, yeah. A, a, um, Mavis's kitchen yeah. with the rings. Oh, no. that was a while ago, but that was yeah. <laughs> um, oh, no. Trends. And we would go back to all the bridesmaids and grooms and yeah, standing at the front. Yeah. yeah, we've had a couple of like super hot weddings lately. It's just yeah. cooking, and you see the dudes standing there, and you're like, man, they're sweating. Um, well, yeah, so that's a good point. I, yeah. And I started pushing this about three years ago with yeah. my couple, yeah. where I'm like, okay, so. Get your bridal party to sit down halfway yep. through. Then you get yep. the best of both worlds and you've got everyone standing in support with you at the first half and yep. everyone looks fantastic. And then second half, you're going to face each other anyway. Yep. Yep. So what happens for you as a bridesmaid is all you're looking at is the back of the it's head the and yep. same with the groom. So either switch places, get your bridal party yep. to switch places yeah. so at least they can see each other but better, reserve some seats for them, let them yep. sit down and just witness the second half when you're going to be facing each other. Yep. And Because that second half, I always say the first half there's engagement, you're yep. looking outward, you're you know connecting with your people but second half it's all eyes on each other. Yep. No, no one else exists yep. so your bridal party might as well be able to witness that yep. um, without always, being up oh, front. And they always, I find, I shouldn't say always, a lot of the times, especially the, the the groom side of the crew, they just they look bored. <laughs> they're just standing there. They're just like, when are the beers flowing? Or something yeah. Like. So like, yeah, I, I'm I'm in massive support of just getting them to sit down because yep. yeah, they're, they're thinking about the whole time. My feet hurt. Yeah. And all this sun and yeah. Totally. But, yeah. So, so I, I'm feeling like more and more people are going for that yep. idea when I talk it through to them and the why. I've yep. even purchased myself some nice reserve tickets. Yeah, um, beautiful signs. Mm. Just because it can get a bit hectic when everyone's coming yeah, in. Definitely. Well, I need three there and, you know, yep. so now I've just, I say it's my responsibility. I've got the reserve signs. I'll manage that for you. Yeah, you know? okay, cool. Would you recommend that the bridal party sit front uh, front row or would you still keep the, the parents and stuff there and then go to the second Again, it row? depends on how many seats either side. Yep. So yep. definitely parents usually front and centre yep. either yep. side. And I always also buck tradition and I, so if the bride's, you know, at, usually on the right-hand side yep. facing yep. the guests, so I say bride's parents should be on the left-hand side. I love that. So mm, when, that. The, when they're facing each other, they, their parents are getting a, a much better view of their, yeah. of their own child's face rather than the side. That's really good. So, that's that, again, that idea. can really unsettle guests as they're yeah. arriving, but then they all go later, oh, that was so good. Yeah. But we're yeah. on the groom's side. You're like, it's yeah. okay, it's, it's okay. Yeah, we're not in a church. We can <laughs> yeah. buck tradition. Yeah. You know? yeah. So just the practicalities. And uh, I find that this sort of stuff comes up a lot in that first conversation with couples and yeah. they realise there's so much they hadn't thought about Definitely. with these sorts of subtle things that yeah. make everyone's ceremony experience so different. Yeah. Even photo-wise when you're doing that, it's so good because we kind of usually will get a couple shots from the front of the ceremony shooting yeah. back towards the parents and yeah. it's so nice being able to shoot past the bride back towards her parents yeah. looking at her yeah. whereas the other way around it doesn't really work. Yeah. And, yeah, you can you just like little subtle things like that mm. and it just it makes such a big difference where they are looking at their daughter or they're looking at their son mm. yeah. and you just get this connection. Yeah. Like, yes, it's so good. Totally. Yeah. So I just I feel like coming back to your question just on yeah. the reserve, yeah. like it's it's logistical but it, it depends on how many seats are in the front and how how big the bridal party is. Yeah. So I think logistically I feel at like most weddings they're probably – five, six each, each side, each side, and you've probably got a bridal party of at least three each side or something mm. like that. So I was just like, I wonder, I guess if you've got six seats, then you've got mum, dad, but then I guess grandma, yeah. yeah. It just works out on the day. Like sec yeah. often it'll be second row. If yeah. there's three on either side yeah. of bridal yeah. party, second row, but if there's only two or something, then yeah. they'll often put them in next to the parents on yeah. the outside of the first. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Another point. Um, We've recently had a wedding that felt like it was 57 degrees and we the day before we had a, one where a storm was coming, was we were watching the bomb, it was like it's game on. Yep. Um, how do you go as far as adjusting the ceremony? Mm. If you know something's happened or grandma's about to pass out because it's so hot, yeah. how do you go on the fly being like I think we need to shorten this or we're going to mm. remove this little part? Mm. Do you do that? Or yeah. We, yeah, okay. Especially if it's about to rain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely sections I can chop and yep. certain paragraphs that I know like 
again, I'm always looking for the engagement of mm. the guests and the yep. couple and mm. occasionally you can feel like, oh, that paragraph's probably just this making this section too long. Yep. So I, when I'm doing my rehearsals I will have certain sections that I know I can leave out if I'm feeling like people are too hot or yep. the rain's coming or, you know, there's – you can sort of pick whether the audience is fully engaged or not. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I have ones, certain paragraphs sometimes pegged as okay. might leave out, might not. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, not the personal stuff but yeah. maybe certain things where you're talking about their perspectives on love or marriage. Yeah, yep. I did one the other day um, at um, Beach at Byron and, yeah, we had we had the rain. Yeah. The first little sh- shower that came in, I'm like, oh, I think oh, we're oh. good. <laughs> so we kept going and then... It got towards the end, and they were they were going to do um, I forget what it was, but the, the I shoe checked, game, the shoe game, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> something. I, um, I checked in with her. I'm like, do you think we should cut this? So just yeah. there in the moment, she's yeah, to leave that out. But yeah. we still didn't get the we still didn't get, didn't get the rings in um, before it started pissing down. Yeah. So we had to move <laughs> undercover, and then we ended up doing the exit outside, which was cool. Oh, so cool. yeah, just pivoting. Yep. Based yeah. on what's happening. It is good to know you're not like stuck in like, no, I'm 100% just going to do this regardless. Like it's yeah. good to be able to work mm. on the fly and change that up. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah, um, I feel like I, I had one recently where I was just like, I feel like you definitely could have cut that because we literally almost had like grandma passing out and it was like all the guests, actually everyone was in the sun and then like someone was sitting under a tree but then that tree was like ages back and it was like, all right, like. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brides makes up makeup's running down. <laughs> You're just like, dude, come on, let's go. Yeah. But that's also part of the conversation in the lead up. Prior. Like again, yep. a good um, coordinator or someone who knows weddings, like, yeah, don't do a beach wedding yeah. at midday on in January, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or yeah. like how's the shade and can yeah. you shift it, you know, into the shade if you need to? I mean, venues like Fig Tree and all the ones we work at with Barnbury Weddings, everything's so schmick exactly, and smooth yeah. and everyone yeah. knows, you know, what's what. But when you you know, dealing with the more rogue weddings yeah, and yeah. random ones. And it's sort of, for me, I feel like as a celebrant, it's sometimes my responsibility to give that feedback in the, in the beginning piece. Like you're going to be in the sun for a while. So we'll make sure your ceremony is short to start with. Yep. Or Yeah. Talking about fig tree, we rock up here and the champagne's flowing from the moment the bus arrives and everyone's got the champagnes and the vibes are high. Yeah. Yep. Champagnes before ceremony? Yes? No? As a purist, like, well, p- not purist, but... I, I personally reckon it's nice to keep alcohol till after okay, the ceremony. Yep. But, you know, many people I work with don't agree with that thought and that's yep. fine, you know. We, so there can be an association that you turn up at a wedding and that first thing you do is have a champagne. Yep. My my personal feeling is alcohol changes an energy okay. very mm-hmm. quickly and I, you know, even though my ceremonies have a lot of fun in them, yep. there's also a reverent piece that yep. I think hits people better um, without alcohol in their system. Okay, so enough. having a nice non-alcoholic arrival drink and then bringing out the beers and the champagnes on the back end yep. would always be my my thought and that's how I do, do it personally. But, yep. yeah, mm. obviously work with plenty of people who yeah. make yep. that make the other choice. This is my opinion. Beautiful. Yep. Mm. Any other tips? So we've got to wrap it up pretty soon. Mm. Any other tips that you would have for like brides and grooms crafting their ceremony um, that you can think of? You know, you do this every day. Yeah. Mm. Anything that you've picked up along the way that you think would be helpful to other brides and grooms crafting a ceremony? I think... Let the pros do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but but yeah, come up with like what's going to work for your, you and your people. Mm. Yep. So definitely the vows um, are a big one and keeping the vows so that they're really relevant to the future. Yep. Yeah. So that sometimes people go... Oh, you know, don't I have to say all the things I love about them? I'm like, yep. no, no, by the time we get to the vows, I've done that for yeah, you. I've totally. shared what you love about each other. We've also spoken about your backstory. So yep. to me the vows are such a good opportunity to get a really solid blueprint for your future together mm. yep. and then to speak that in front of your family and friends so you're always accountable on that mm. and to consider framing your vows, like have them in your kitchen, have them in your, you know, living room so yeah. that there's something that travels through your yep. journey with you. So that's something that I... Um, definitely really like to encourage in, the, yeah. in my people. Imagine having your kitchen, yeah. having your vows like framed. Because then yeah. you can point in the idea. morning like, dude, you've yeah. not been doing this one. Yeah. Like, yeah. come on. You told me you'd love me <laughs> you every day. You told me you'd say yes to adventures and yesterday yeah. you didn't want to come to the beach with me. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> coffee every morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's one that I definitely, you know, would yeah. go quite deep deep on with couples I work with. And, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I always just say like what are you going to notice? Like everyone... A lot of people on budgets and, you know, 
what am I going to spend my money on? Yep. So what's what's going to really affect your experience of that yeah. ceremony on the day? Yep. And if it's not, if you're not going to notice it, but you're doing it because you know your mum wants you to, don't do that piece. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And in, in you know, break the tradition if you want yep. to around mm. even the bride's entrance. Like mm-hmm. if you want to walk in on your own, do that. Or yep. if you want to. Um, you know, have someone come up and sing a song. Yeah. Like so that's another one that comes up a bit. So if you've got the, you know, rather than just a, a hiring a musician, you've got mm, someone yep. with some talent mm-hmm. in your people, yeah, in yeah. your a cohort, then get them to come and sing a song and make it like a performance. So rather yep. than a reading, mm. have that, per, you know, that person in your life who would really love to perform something. Yeah. Don't do it as an entrance or an exit, like yeah. nice to have a side on because you'll be totally focused on other things there, yeah. whether it's signing or all the emotions that come with the entrance, like actually stop and have that person perform mm, a piece yeah. for you or, or you know, deliver a piece of prose or writing that they've done for you yeah. where you can really receive that and be present rather than um, yeah. you're tied in with all the other bits that are going on in the beginning or this, you know. Signing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what else? I don't know. That's a pretty good wrap-up. I, I like think that. that's great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay, if people are looking to buy, like, get a celebrant in Byron Bay, how can they get in contact with you? Um, well... I captured that really cool, um, what's called URL, so Byron Bay Wedding Ceremonies. Yep, yeah, nice. Yeah, Susie Figures will pop up all over the place too. Yep. Um, yeah, and just always really love the, the chance to connect with people and see yep. if we can get our, you know, if we do resonate and have that have that laughter moment, which yep. usually means we're going to work really well together. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, coffee or a, or a chat. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. Amazing. Mm, thank, thank you so you. much for being with us, Susie. It's great. Yay. Thank I'm you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Wedco podcast. We're dropping a fresh episode every week featuring industry professionals dishing out the wedding wisdom you need to turn those dreams into reality. Make sure you are following us on social media. You have those notifications turned on so we can help plan your wedding day. Your dream wedding day just got a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening.